founder of the Southeast Tennis and Learning Center and creator of Blacks and Wax. Joining her is Reggie Van Lee, CEO of DC Arts and Humanities Commission and longtime supporter of Blacks and Wax. Hello. Say that again. Hello. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is our 17th annual Blacks and Wax. I know I stood on this stage last year and said last year was the last time I lied. Here we are. So I don't have a lot to say. I want to acknowledge some people uh, that are here that are very special, starting with our mayor who's talking to our our sponsor, Mayor, Mayor Bowser. I want to acknowledge the council members from the DC Council. If you're here, would you please stand? I know Christine Henderson is here, yes. I want to acknowledge all of the board members of the Recreation Wish List Committee. Would you please stand? I also want to acknowledge the chair of the Recreation Wish List Committee, Mr. J.R. Clark. We had some sponsors this year, and uh, I want to start with the uh, Department of Parks and Recs. The director there is Ms. Cindy Freeman. Would you stand? I want to acknowledge our publicist that makes, did y'all see me on TV last week? Girl, did I look good? Did our kids do good? Everybody give a hand to Ramon Bain for that. And then I, uh, the department, I'm sorry, Events DC. But last year we got a new member to the board and I'll talk about him in a minute because before I do that, I want to acknowledge, who are you? Who put this man next to us? This is my dear friend who actually is responsible for us being at the Kennedy Center, Mr. Reggie Van Lee. I appreciate him, he has never left our side. And we don't have time to tell the story, but you know he's one of those longtime friends. Reggie, would you want to say something, please? Something, please. <laughs> now, I just want to say that I, I saw the first program about 15 years ago, and the first thing I said to Mrs. Barry is, this is one of DC's best kept secrets. People need to know about this. I did a fundraiser for them at my apartment um, at the Watergate at the time, and looked out at the Kennedy Center and I said, we need to go to the Kennedy Center next year. That was over a decade ago, and we've been here for 11 years. So thank you for your support here. Thank you for being here, and hope you enjoy the show. Thank you, Reggie. And finally, you know, we have children. They're special. I made a, I made a statement, and I'm glad we have some political people here. I watched the hearing on the crime bill, and it upset me. Because when you listen, you would think that all of our children were committing crimes. Most of our children are not and especially from Ward 8 and Ward 7. So let's give them a hand. <laughs> These are not special children. They had no training. There are everyday kids who decided to work very hard and do this. And in order for us to look, girl, we are fancy today. We have, we have you know, props and stuff. And we got a lot of people working for us. And those costumes are fabulous. And you know what, take, you know what it takes to do that? M-O-N-E-Y. And the person who stepped up saw the brilliance of the kids. It was our longtime partner, but really our presenting sponsor this year, Pepco Holdings. And, our, and the person who was responsible for looking out for is our board member, Mr. Rodney Odoye. And would you come please and have a few words? Give him a hand. Just move it. Well, Rodney, walk up. <laughs> Just move it. Give him a hand as he comes up. Uh, uh, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Cora, for those kind words. You know, I won't say a lot, because it's not really about us. It's about all the children. First of all, I want to acknowledge uh, Mayor Bowser for all your work all the public and elected officials in the room. This wouldn't be possible without you, recreational wish list. When I joined this uh, board, I was inspired by the, the children and the work of the community at Pepco. I would like to believe that the work we do is more than energy. 
Uh, we believe in putting our energy behind our children. And hopefully tonight you'll see that product. Our children really are the future generation here. And hopefully all of them here will be able to incite something in themselves that will transform their lives. So at Pepco and Exelon, we're proud to be partners and we hope this partnership will continue for a while. So thank you, Cora.
It's not just about you, it's about all of us. We a team. Ready to rock. Come on, we outside. Oh, say less. <laughs> I'll be at New York City. We outside. Uh, you and I T Y. You and I T Y. That's a unity. You and I T Y. Uh. another flow every time i hear a brother call a girl oh no trying to make a sister feel low you know all of that got to go now everyone know that this sets to this rule don't be getting mad when we playing it's cool but don't you be calling me out my name i bring wrath to those who disrespect me like a dame uh you and i t y you and i t y that's a unity you and i t y love a black man from infinity to in uh you and I T Y, you gotta let them know you and I T Y, that's a unity. You and I T Y, love a black man from infinity to infinity. Do y'all know what hip hop is? I said, do y'all know what hip hop is? Where it started? Why it started? And just how old it is? I feel like I'm privileged to be a part of this elite community, to share not just my journey, Queen Latifah's life, but the story of hip hop. As it continues to be not just a mirror of what is, but a reflection of what can be. So here we go. From the beginning, hip hop, the music, the culture, the struggle. Now, before there was a movement, there was a need to move, a need to party. The young folks in the black neighborhood, the Bronx, New York to be exact, were looking for a way to celebrate their lives despite the living conditions, the gang wars, and the poverty. Peace in the streets happened when everyone was celebrating with music. August 17th, 1973. That's the birthday of hip hop. That means we're 50 years old, y'all. Yeah. And DJ Cool Hurt, he's the godfather of hip hop. He wanted his sister's backyard party to be the jam. So, Hurt took his father's speaker cabinets and started the party. Hurt created hip hop by extending the beats of a song at the breaks, using two turntables with two albums with the same song. So the dance moves could just go on and on and on. It was masterful and the beginning of an era. Then came the MCs hyping the crowd, using their words to keep the excitement going. In the beginning, it was Africa Mambada, who changed his name after a trip to Africa in the early 1970s. Now, he was a key figure in the early development of hip hop, one of the most influential promoters and organizers of the block party culture. He formed the Zulu Nation, a collection of DJs, MCs, B boys, B girls, and graffiti artists. These are the four elements of hip hop. And the movement grew with more technique and more DJs and MCs stirring it up. Then along came Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. But it was Flash who came up with an even greater technique using three turntables with several records at the same time. Now, he was indeed a master.
he came from the South Bronx. Me, Melly Mel, Kid Creole, Keith Cowboy, Scorpio, and Raheem. We were the number one rock group on the streets of New York City. Before rap music was embraced by the music industry, we set the standard for all other MC groups who came after us. But as the DJ quickly learned, sometimes there was a conflict with the MC, who was the front man, the storyteller to the beast. We didn't stay together, but the song on Sugar Hill Records was attributed to us made history and put us on the map. The message was a social commentary rap that was released right at the time Reaganomics, Cold World Politics, and Urban Despair were converging on the country. Our audience wasn't just black, but white, and others who found a profile, who found it relevant. The message was played right alongside Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, Stevie Wonder's Living for the City, and Gil Scott Heron's The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. People everywhere were listening to us. It's like a joke sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep me going under. It's like a joke it makes me wonder how I keep me going nuts. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> it's like a joke sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep me going nuts. <laughs> and I produced the message along with my husband, Joe Robinson. It was a hit, and I knew it would be. I am the one and only Sylvia Robinson, better known as the godmother of hip hop. And why? Because before that single, I produced the first hip hop single to go on vinyl and build a group you know as the Sugar Hill Gang. Me and my husband lived in New Jersey at the time, and I had my son drive me all around Englewood searching for rappers. I had a great feeling about this music genre, and I wasn't afraid to make a record and put it on the radio. So that night, rappers that jumped in and out of the back seat of my car wanted me to hear their raps until I found the perfect combination to record together. Now the music industry didn't think it could capture the energy of a rap artist, but I knew better. You see, I was an artist myself, a singer, producer, and record label executive. I've done it all, so I know what it takes to make a hit. Speaking of which, do y'all remember Rapper's Delight? It was the first rap record to make the charts and put rap music on the map in 1979. Now, we did sample good times from the group Chic. A lot of that was going on those days. And the writers on the song, Naya Rodgers and Bernard Edwards, ooh, they were not happy with us. So I did the right thing and made them co-writers on the song. Then everything and everyone were good. Now I have to say, I had some rough moments in the music industry with the artists, but I know that I put rap on the map. And you must admit, Rapper's Delight was one of the most catchiest songs of all time. Y'all ready? Sing with me, y'all. I said a hip hop, a hippie, a hippie to the hip hip hop. You don't stop the rocket to the bang bang boogie. Say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. Now what you hear is not a test. I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. See, I am one the mic, and I like to say hello. To the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, and the purple, and yellow. But first, I gotta bang, bang, a boogie to the boogie. Say up, jump the boogie to the bang, bang, boogie. Let's rock. You don't stop. Rock the rhythm that'll make your body rock. Peace. I mean, we got you all rocking to the bang, bang, boogie, the beat. Okay, okay. 
let's talk about another element of hip hop. B-boys and B-girls. Breaking. It was all the rage back in the day. Breaking, not break dancing, was the 1970s slang for getting excited, acting energetically, or causing a disturbance on the dance floor. So let me break it down. It was a top rock, down rock, power moves, and freezes for all of the music breaks in hip hop. And one of the baddest b-boys at that time, Curtis Blow, and I want you to know that these are the breaks. Clap your hands, everybody, if you got what it takes. Cause I'm Curtis Blow, and I want you to know that these are the breaks. secret identity as a b-boy during after school hours that I shine. I was the best dancer at the school. When I was 15, I used to go on in the Gwens and do that frantic break dance, the fancy, fancy footwork to the funky, funky music. And I would have the crowd in the palm of my hand. That's how it started. That's how I fell in love with hip hop. I was a party DJ before picking up the mic in 1976. I even had some gigs with Grandmaster Flash. I was a student at the City College of New York when I met a classmate who became my manager. I was Russell Simmons' first client, and we worked together as I climbed the charts and became rap's first breakout solo star. The breaks climbed to number four on Billboard's Hot Soul single in 1980, and that's been sampled more than 100 times over the years by artists like KRS-One, Master P, Carmen, plus DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince, just to name a few. Hip hop forever, baby. Now hold up. Wait a minute, bro. I was Russell Simmons' artist as well. Started just 16. And I'm not letting hip hop go. LL Cool J, I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. That's short for Ladies Love Cool James. That's me, James Todd Smith. Straight for Queens, baby. I was on a Dap Jam record at just 16 years old and use my aggressive lyrical flow, complex rhymes, and that radio-friendly sound, both the men and the ladies love. I think my single, I Need Love, connected rap music to the love ballads of the 1970s. When, when I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall And in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call Telling me I need a girl who's as sweet as a dove For the first time in my life, I see I need love I was known for my Kangol and Adidas sneakers Don't forget gold, baby That's how we roll With hit after hit, I still needed something to make my career solid. Acting, you may know me as Sam Hanna from NCIS Los Angeles, still rocking to this day. I got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2021. I got a star on the Walk of Fame from 2016. I'm on the national board of the Smithsonian, a serious radio channel, and a beautiful wife over 20 years. and some amazing children, and I'm still not letting go. 
Hip Hop Forever, baby. Now that's my brother. And I think LL is cool. He's always had a lot of style. And style is a major part of the culture of hip hop. Now there was an entrepreneurial movement that defined hip hop in the 80s and 90s. We saw the birth of hip hop brands like FUBU, Cross Colors, Baby Fat, Fat Farm, and many others. Now these designers were black, bold, and opinionated. Kanai, April Walker, Misa Hilton, Russell Simmons, Sean John, Dapper Dan, and Kamora Lee Simmons. See, I was, you know, the artists want you dress head to toe. They even talked about their clothes and their raps. The B-Boys and B-Girls wanted baggy pants, which made it easier for them to break. They mix trends and love colors. The brighter, the louder, and the better. Before Kamora Lee, that's me, and Baby Fat, there was Fat Farm, of course started by my ex, Russell Simmons. And then there was April Walker, creator of Walker Wear. She was the woman who dressed hip hop artists in the 80s. She knew when hip hop started busting on the scene, she wanted to be involved. She wanted to create an alternative to Dapper Dan, who was all about high end designer wear and logos. April listened to artists and built her brand through trial and error, word of mouth, credibility, and a lot of hustle. See, I was a model at 13 years old, wearing some of the most glamorous clothes from around the world. I knew I wanted my clothing line early on in life. And when I got the opportunity, I ran with it. Baby Fat was founded in 1999 as the women's counterpart to Russell Simmons' Fat Farm clothing line. Now, I wanted Baby Fat to be more than a brand. I wanted it to be a lifestyle. So I used my expertise as a model, fashion mogul, and mother and rocked into inclusivity and empowerment for women. It was all about girl power. Fur trim jackets, jeans, and the iconic velour tracksuit. From 2001 to 2002, we went from a $30 million business to a $265 million business. fashion, and hip-hop. Check it out for yourself. Speaking of fashion, I got my own style. With a moniker like Queen Latifah, I had to show a regal and embrace regal colors and headgear from the beginning. From crowns to gowns to a funky hoodie in between to a plaid shirt, I will rock fashion. Now colors are an important part of hip hop fashion and much of that influence came from right off the street, literally from the graffiti artists, also known as writers, 
the fourth element of hip hop. We heard a young brother from Philly start the art of street graffiti. He began by writing his nickname, Cornbread, all over the walls of the city brotherly love, and even on an elephant in the zoo. Can you imagine? He had a rough start in life, but he just wanted to be known. That's what most of us want, for you to know that we're here, that we exist. Once graffiti got to New York, it took off. Girls and boys were entranced by the movement of the colors, the letters, and the style. We began writing before the rap scene. We listened and grooved to music by Carlos Santana, Sly Stone, and even some rock music. But then, we began moving along to the beats of hip hop, showing up in places where the movement was happening. We take big risks. Subway stations, rail cars, buildings, trucks, you name it, we put a name on it. The brighter, the better. The fancier, the more exciting. You create a style that is all your own and your own name. Rarely your real one becomes your moniker, and that's art too. My moniker is Lady Pink. And as a female out here, you have to be extra careful. Most of the time, we're roaming through the night, climbing through fences, running through tunnels, and well, you just have to be careful and gain your respect. Yo tango el mio seguro. Now, graffiti is an accepted art form. Hmm. Interesting how what we were once harassed for by the police has become sought after art by the masses. Mayor Koch of New York declared an all-out war against the Graf kids. He instituted curfews, anti-cruising laws, and even stopping frisk programs. We're not the gangs contrary to what they think. Most of the time, we have to be careful of the gangs ourselves. But now, we compete with others to get our art into well-known studios and museums. Graffiti. Maybe now you'll look at it a little differently and maybe see the beauty in it too. Amigos, vamos, vamos, la policía está aquí. Walk slow, walk, walk slow. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this and like that and like this, Santa. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this and like that and like this, Santa. What up, DC? I'm rapping the West Coast tonight. And we had a lot to talk about. That's why we came hard, making it well known that the living conditions, the police brutalities, and the social injustices were wrong. We wanted to expose it and fight back, cuz. But with so much drama in the LBC, it's kind of hard being Snoop D O Double G. But I somehow, some way, keep coming up with funky hits like every single day. May I kick a little something for the G's and make a few ends as I breeze through two in the morning and the party still jumping because my mama ain't home. The D.O.G. from the L.B.C. But I was picked up by Compton rapper D.R.E. 
He heard me spit, put me on quick. For shizzle, my nizzle. It was his first album since he left N.W.A. Remember them cuz? Straight out of Compton with that hardcore rap. Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Easy e Yeah, cuz, that rap shook up the nation. Cause it came with a message that went straight at the police, the politicians, and the country. Talking about the conditions of the hood, cuz. The brutality, the curfews, and the unjust treatment. The language, well, that was harsh too. That's what made the feds roll up on him. But back to Dr. Dre. And his first album, The Chronic, was also my debut in the industry. It ushered in a whole new phase of West Coast hip hop, the G-Funk era. Yeah. It was copied by artists across coast and genres. And in the first single, featuring yours truly, one, two, Three into the four. Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre is at the door. Ready to make an entrance, so back on up. Cause he know we about to turn it up. Give me the mic. Mm. So I could bust like a bubble. Compton and Long Beach, you know you in trouble. <laughs> then, my debut album, Doggy Style. It was unacceptable and perpetuated violence in our communities. My work and my life's dedication are civil rights and women's rights. I marched with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. for these issues, and I know one thing for sure. Gangster rap puts this work in reverse. It is demeaning to all women. It is misogynistic, and I am on a crusade against it. I am here to put the nation on notice that violence perpetuated against women through the music industry in the form of gangster rap will not be tolerated any longer. Principle must come before profit. Our young people are being influenced negatively by the lyrics and the graphics of this music. As soon as I heard this Snoop Dogg album, doggy style, I said enough is enough. I established the National Political Congress of Black Women Entertainment Commission, headed by Dionne Warwick, Melba Moore, and others. The primary goal is the task of examining and maintaining strategies for the reshaping and protecting our youth. I, C. Dolores Tucker, and my husband Bill bought stock in Warner Brothers so we could sit in on the meetings and have our concerns be known. I put everyone on notice. Snoop Dogg, Suge Knight, Jay-Z, Eminem, and Tupac, letting them know that there are three things wrong with this music. Obscene, obscene, obscene! Lady rapper, he's a step into the house. So get ready for the mother low and let me introduce myself. My name is Yo Yo. No, I'm pissed off. I come all the way from Compton, California. Thanks to Ice Cube. Yay, yay! <laughs> Who helped me make no, my record deal? I made my own record deal with the baddest female label executive in the business, Sylvia Rowe, who is CEO of Atlantic Records. She believed in me, so I paid the way for the West Coast female MC. So you see, Yo-Yo is the brand new intelligent black girl. I have some advice for the ladies and some words of wisdom for the guys. Did you ever read my column in Vibe magazine? It was called Yo, Yo-Yo. <laughs> Although I got my start with Ice Cube and appeared on his debut album, America's Most Wanted. He returned the favor and appeared on my favorite single, You Can't Play With My Yo-Yo. I think I was a refreshing voice for hip hop, an MC with positive messages and uplifting themes. My intelligent black woman coalition is here to support young girls, teach them to embrace their self-esteem, love their bodies, and encourage them to get an education. I'm proud of my body of work 
as a rapper, a writer, and an actress. <laughs> you did see me in the classic Boys in the Hood. Or oh, what about Martin as Key Lolo? What are you talking about, Kahlua? <laughs> Kahlua? My name is Key Low Low. You got it? K E Y Low Low. low. <laughs> Man, I even had a role on New York Undercover. But now you can hear my voice on the syndicated radio show, Cafe Mocha, having a blast with my co-host, Angelique and Lonnie Love, delivering radio from a women's perspective, dedicated to women of color. So it's me, Yo-Yo, and I'm still rocking. Hip-hop forever, baby. two friends at school, working at the Sears department store after school. Does anybody remember Sears? <laughs> yep, but the one in Queens. <laughs> and your boyfriend wrote a song and asked us to sing on it. The showstopper is super fresh. And answer the Dougie Fresh and Get Fresh Screws, the show. Mm-hmm. We recorded it under the name Super Nature. So glad we changed our name, but that's how it started. After a time, we were going to school, working at Sears after class, and working gigs on the weekend in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And your boyfriend, Azor, who was now our producer and writer, became love bug and found our Spinderella, baddest DJ in the house. Yo, 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 what's up, party people? It's your girl, Spinderella, in the house. You know you can't have salt and pepper without the spin. Hey! Me and Salt and Pepper was a game changer. They were the hottest thing in the New York hip hop scenes, and I had to be a part of it. I auditioned for Salt and Pepper and got him picked by producer Herbie, Love Bug Azor. Mm hmm. We weren't afraid to touch topics that women needed to hit. It was such a meditative industry, and we took a chance to battle in one of the biggest groups at the time. Now, we came along at a time when female rappers weren't having that much commercial success, but we brought fun, fashion, and femininity to hip hop. And we tackled big issues head on with our music, the first female rap group to go platinum. That means we sold a million records. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget the time Dougie Fresh came through a radio station for an interview. We hit it off right away. Vibe over our shared love of hip hop and beats. That encounter meant a seat for our epic collaboration later. The legendary Dougie Fresh, we make beats and rhymes like nobody's business, bringing a whole new flavor to the scene. And our song, Let's Talk About Sex, which we later rewrote the lyrics and changed it to Let's Talk About AIDS, because in the 90s there was an epidemic and we wanted people to be aware. Mm. Proud to say we became more and more responsible as our lives changed. We had children and families and knew it wasn't for to get the people who looked up to us something they could use in life. Mm. Today, I'm still spinning rhymes and spinning beats, inspiring the next generation to embrace their true selves and never be afraid to mix things up. And now, I'm passing on the torch to the next generation. My daughter's taking up DJing and she's killing it. Remember, whether you're dropping beats or rhymes, Always, always stay true to yourself and keep the music alive. Thank you. 
Yes. And the show was the most popular song from my debut album, Oh My God! It allowed me to show my skills as the human beatbox. So when Salt and Pepper came after us, I thought, that's gutsy girls, go for it. I'm a chill silver guy, born in Barbados and raised at home by my mom and my granddad. What an experience to be right in the heart of music, culture, and soul every day. I got to hip hop as I was a huge fan of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five and the Cold Crush Brothers. But I'm also a big fan of poetry, especially poetry from the legendary Langston Hughes. But I love my time with Slick Rick and your fresh crew. We rocked the house night after night. I used all my experiences and love of the culture to grow my talent. But I love my community, and I teamed up with Dr. Ola G. Williams to create hip hop, public health, an organization that teaches health, literacy to underserved communities. There's nothing more important than our health, and I'm here to get back whenever I can. Sometimes it seems like all we gave was six, six minutes, minutes, six minutes, six minutes, so you press your own, oh, 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 always been fresh, just got a little fresher. Exactly, bro. These pants are not good. These pants are not good. Ooh, can't touch this. Can't touch this. Can't touch this. Can't touch this. a mixture of vibes. East Coast, West Coast, the Dirty South, the Midwest, and beyond. Now the culture was spreading and everybody had a groove, but there were some serious battles too. Ludacris, Outkast, and Master P in the South. Common, Kanye West, and Chance the Rapper in the Midwest. Ice T, Ice Cube, Tupac Shakur and Kendrick Lamar in the West. And the East Coast just kept coming with P. Diddy, Chuck D and Public Enemy, Eric B and Rakim, and my sisters who didn't back down, like Roxanne Shante, like Roxanne Shante and MC Light. We learned so much from them. Mm -hmm. If you know you started something, 
then there's no need for anyone to tell you what you started. <laughs> I don't need that validation. I know that Roxanne Shante was the first female rapper ever. It was tough growing up in the streets of Queens, and I discovered my love and talent was spitting rhymes at just eight years old while I watched Nipsey wrestle on our small TV. Now, Nipsey could use words in a way that no one else had ever heard, and I learned that so can I. I only had seven minutes to rap on a song that would be my first big break and the beginning of the battles. While my mother's clothes dry in the machine at the laundromat, I put a rap down on tape for Molly Ma and the Juice Crew. It was to the original music from UTFO's Roxanne, Roxanne. The battle began as I took on each one of the guys in UTFO, and I was just 14 years old. I didn't want to be second best. I didn't want to be best girl. I wanted to be the best. I don't you know, I just a cold rock a party and I do this show. I saw the magic three guys and you know it's true. Well, let me tell you and explain them all to you. I met this dude with the name of a hat. I didn't even walk away, I didn't give him no rap. But then he got real mad and he got a little tired. If he worked with me, you know it would be fine. He was a kangaroo and that is true. But he ain't got the money and he ain't got the loot. And every time that I see him, he's always to begging. And other other guys that he's always trying to leg. And every time that I see him, he says, but compared to me, it's weak compared to mine Every time that I know that I am seeing something better In any category, I'm considered the best And every time that I say it, there ain't nothing less And everybody knows I will win the contest mm. Now Roxanne Shante did lead the way And the battle rap no one like her. My style is one part battle rapper and one part storyteller. See, my narrative directly challenged the sexism and misogyny that saturated rap. I wanted to be the voice for young black women. Light as a Rock by yours truly, MC Light, came out during a time when hip hop was, came out in 1988 during a time when hip hop was growing. That was the same year as NWA Strata Compton, Big Daddy Kane's Long Live the Kane and Public Enemies, it takes a nation of millions to hold us back, have been released, just to name a few. Hip hop was maturing and its message was potent. But even with the full year hits, Light as a Rock held its own. See, I'm from Brooklyn, but my cousins in Harlem introduced me to hip hop. I was mesmerized by the lyrics and all the styles. But when I heard Roxanne Chante and Salt and Pepper, I knew I wanted to write. I wanted to rap. I filled my notebook with poem after poem until I was ready. Yeah, when I finally hit that stage, I wore baggy pants. Because I didn't want you to just look at me. I wanted you to hear me, hear my message, which was an anti-drug message. I am proud to have been the first female solo rapper to be nominated for a Grammy in 1993. And in 2011, I was the first African-American female to serve as president for the LA chapter of the Recording Academy. Look how far we've come. We are a part of the American history. We find a way to tell our stories. Young people are listening. Young people are listening. We are here to stay. Hip hop, Hip -hop forever, forever, baby. You know the South has something to say too. Hip hop moves from place to place, and Atlanta had a fresh approach to MCing. I started young, like so many of us. At nine years old, before I moved to Atlanta with my mom, I was in a group called Loud Mouth Hooligans. The name Ludacris is something I made up for myself. Fits my personality. My style is free, flowing, somewhat comedic with hard headed punchlines. In one of my songs, said my rap career goes back further than your father's hairline. My biggest gain was after I landed an advertising campaign with Pepsi, Rash Tessa, my album, Word of Mouth. The deal ended up as a minor scandal when Fox News host 
Bill O'Reilly called for a boycott of the drink for choosing me because of some of the language I used on the album. So Pepsi dropped me. But after action by Russell Simmons Hip Hop Summit Action Network, Pepsi agreed to make $3 million in donations to urban charities, which was a win for hip hop. Things got even better. I played Tedge Parker in all the Fast and Furious sequels, and I think we're up to eight now. I'm gonna keep riding high with this community, and I'm fortunate to have a foundation that gives back to youth of our communities. And I know all that's happened in my life is ludicrous. Look, I'm a Chicago MC with Southern religious roots. The record label didn't want me to record this song, but I had a right to observe my fate in song and rap. I mean, Jesus Walks was the biggest hits of all hits in the college dropout album. We came with it complete with background vocals sampled by Walk With Me by Harlem based Attic Rehabilitation Choir. That means we sold four million copies of that album. And I even opened up the BET Awards with solo performance by gospel singer Yolanda Adams. Man, now look, I know my way of working is different. I mean, my production is kind of superior. And my style, I mean, out of this world. Now, you really don't like my politics, but you really do love my Yeezys by Adidas. I bet you got some on right now. But no more where those came from. They shut that down because I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. But I've sold over 160 million albums. I've won 24 Grammys. I'm really tied with Jay-Z and some other awards. But if you really think I am done, think again. Yay coming back, Kanye Amari West. That's my real name, yo. For me, it's hip hop forever. Because the devil trying to break me down And I don't think there's nothing I could do now God, show me the way Because the devil trying to break me down The only thing that I pray is that my feet don't fail me now And I don't think there's nothing I could do now to right my wrongs I want to talk to God, but I'm afraid because we ain't spoken so long so long, so long. In the I, 90s, I, all the I, I main hip hop stars were rapping conscious. So there was the brand Nubians, there was the Poor Righteous Teachers, it was Ice Cube, it was Arrested Development, it was X Clan, it, it was Queen Latifah. It, it, black black was, it was in. So whenever the enemy seen that, wait a minute, this is not just some mumbo jumbo over top of some stolen instrumentals from jazz beats. This hip hop thing really has sway over people and can shape and mold public opinion. They can create a revolution with this rap. So they seen that as the dominant artists had an alliance with consciousness and the nation, they seen a transformation taking place among black people. Black people wasn't eating no pork. X caps everywhere, African medallions everywhere. Brother and sister, everybody was talking about struggle, freedom, independence, doing for self. And they knew that they couldn't allow that to remain in existence. So they hijacked conscious, inserted gangster. Now you got drill and selling dope, womanizing and, and abusing and verbal pornography is the new style of music now. Why? Because they know music is the most effective teacher on the planet. Ain't nothing more effective of teaching than music. The minister said this, he said, one good rap song is worth more than a thousand of my speeches. 
message rap. It's been a part of hip hop culture from the beginning. Now there's always a message. Some rappers are more conscious than others. Let's hear from a few of them like Sister Soldier. My mantra is to work with and alongside any human of any race, faith, or culture who lives to act the good in the world and not the evil. I grew up in the Bronx and I'm a graduate of Rutgers University with a degree in American history in African studies. In my college years, I traveled throughout Europe, Russia, England, Spain, Portugal, and Finland. And I was a major participant in the international student anti-apartheid movement that helped create a momentum, movement, and fervor that liberated Nelson Mandela. We must work together. I am a writer with five national bestsellers, but I also became a hip hop artist, spread the word to young folks. Before the political shutdown and attack on America's First Amendment rights, I was a young voice on New York radio that spoke to the hip hop audience about politics, culture, business, and social organization. This includes being a featured speaker at the Million Woman March, a piece of Oprah Winfrey, Larry King Live, and the cover of Newsweek magazine. My city was entitled 360 Degrees of Power. It sparked international debate over issues of race, culture, sexism, and politics. And I learned that the truth makes people uncomfortable. doesn't agree with what someone like me is saying, it is called a sister soldier moment. You better believe it. I was born in Compton, California. My parents moved in the 80s from Chicago to Compton to escape the city's gang culture. Can you imagine? They ended right back where they started from. But I managed to survive even soar below the radar. A good student who loved to write paid off for your boy Kendrick Lamar. I love making sure our heritage, African heritage, is front and center in my videos. It is the essence of our stories and lives because it all starts from the beginning. The two most historical moments in my life were in tw was in 2018. In April, I won a Pulitzer Prize for music for my album, Damn. I am not only the first person to win a Pulitzer Prize for a hip hop album, but also the first person to win a prize for music that is in, cla for music that is in classical or jazz. The Pulitzer Board called the album a virtuosic song collection unified by its vernacular authenticity and rhythmic dynamism that offers effective vignettes capturing the complexity of modern African-American life. Phew! Wow, they liked it, right? But I don't think anything can match the experience I had as the executive producer for the soundtrack album on the film Black Panther. Wakanda forever. Hip hop is still on the rise. What's up, DC? For the people in the back, what's up, DC? This is Chuck D, the man, the myth, the legend. And this Flavor Flav, the hypest hype man in DC. Yeah, you know there's an anthology of hip hop and rap produced by the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. You know I participated in the research and development of anthology and I think that sums up what we should know about hip hop. Unlike traditionally celebrated cultural forms that's national sanction and support, 
Hip hop has been reviled, belittled, attacked, and partnered. So while the vibe may be culturally understood, it is still important for artists to voice their story in their own words, to express what it is and what it's gonna be, to ensure there's a baton to pass along future generations. Wow! <laughs> you see, the fire was so maybe protective, but that definition had to make simple to keep its power. We always play the full elements of hip hop, but again, we say turntablism is music. We move the crowd on simple terms. The master ceremony MC. Dance is breaking. Graffiti are just pressed that we're encouraged. Dance that brings us into collective participation. Was that just that? Or what do you call it, Chuck D? Tribal ceremony? That's right, man. Rap music is vocals over music. Breaks from the talking, the singing. That has allowed rap to be the number one element of hip hop. We use familiar music. Music that fills our spirits and music that touches our souls. Like the funky beats from James Brown, the jazzy blues from Herbie Hancock, and the slow love tones by Marvin Gaye, and so much more. Hip hop is in the state, baby. It just keeps evolving, evolving and shifting over time. time. Go check out what a few of our fellow friends, or should I say fellow rappers, got to say. Yeah, we! You better listen to Flavor Flay. Yeah. You, you have to keep whatever nine-year-old, 12-year-old, 15-year-old is in your head, keep that child alive. No, no matter what you see in the mirror, you're still that child. And you, your imagination has to be bigger than the room, bigger than the building, bigger than the sky, because if you keep the imagination alive, everything is possible. That's right. When you limit your imagination, nothing becomes as possible right. as, you, as it could be. Um, there was an incident at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. It led to you being taken out in handcuffs and arrested. That was wrong. I think the backstage was overcrowded. I think the winners were exuberant. And I think security got a little overzealous. And that's all. I, it's all, you know, it's water under the bridge for me. Yeah. I like to say all of my heroes have been in handcuffs. Malcolm, Martin, Mandela, <laughs> Meg. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I walked out with the same dignity and respect that I walked Good. in with. Let's go. What does it mean? Let's go. Where are we going? Let's go. Where we going? We going straight to the top, baby. Let's go is a constant reminder. Let's go. Boom. Live in the present. Sometimes you know you daydreaming. Sometimes, you know, Uncle Diddy got to hit you with let's go to make sure that you, you, you're pursuing your dream, that you're staying focused. Let's go. Let's keep going forward. I don't go backwards. I don't go to the side. I go forward. Let's go. That's right, Diddy. Let's go. Now, we've come a long way with protest raps and protests about the raps, changing lyrics, and men and women sometimes vibing together, oftentimes not on the same page. Women, as you have seen, have played a major role in this community. Hello. <laughs> there are still so many that we haven't talked about, but a few more that I want you to meet. Timberland, that's my man. We are childhood friends, and he is the baddest writer and producer I have ever worked with. And to prove it, he just found out he'll be inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame this year. I stick by my Virginia Beach crew. We know each other, vibe with each other, and trust and respect each other. Timberland knows Melissa Annette Elliott, but you know Missy Misdemeanor Elliott. I grew up with an abusive father and a scared mother. She finally saved us both. My life remained tough because we were poor. I was so proud. She finally realized how strong she was when she escaped the abuse. Now, I know for sure you have to find some kind of peace. I believe in a high being, and that gives me the faith to be strong and go on. Church is there, always upon my life. I live and die being a Baptist. If I can't go to church on a Sunday, I'll get a tape from the Clark sisters and slide it in for the day. I'm not playing, that's for real. I always knew I wanted to be a part of the music industry, 
So I kept at it, writing and collaborating with boy Tim. We made it, thanks to Sylvia Rohn. I got the right deal, and she liked me. You realize that during those times, the music video was as important as the music itself. My music video director was Harold Hype Williams, who created many groundbreaking hip hop, alpha futuristic videos for the best of the best. My goal was to create new paths for women in the music industry and society through my behind the scenes artistry, songwriter and producer, and unapologetic ownership of this body and my blackness that cannot be denied. Yes, now that's Missy Elliott. And behind the scenes, there's power. And I've had the pleasure of managing the power of Missy Elliott and so many of the hip hop greats, like LL Cool J, 50 Cent, Fantasia, Busta Rhymes, and the list goes on and on. Violator is the artist management company I started with the partner to support what these artists were putting out. We wanted to make sure these artists were being paid or positioned properly. We became the guardians, the shepherds of the hip hop community. And then there was an opportunity in television. First to Missy Elliott and the show in 2005. We produced The Road to Stardom with Missy Elliott. So I started a television production company. Monami Productions, baby. Monami, that's me, Mona Scott. Develop a reality show. Love and hip hop. I know y'all know that one. The key is to provide a platform for people, black people, to become financially empowered. We deserve to own ourselves. Queen of hip hop soul, queen of R&B, I stand in solidarity with these women who deserve to be respected as queens in the community of hip hop. This has been an amazing career from 1988 to this very day. I am blessed and in awe of what I have lived through. I started my career as a backup singer, not a rapper, but a singer. I had always sang in the church, but my life was difficult in the early days, abuse, a father who was a traumatized Vietnam vet, and even a failed marriage. But the opportunities kept coming. Movie parts, more albums, television roles. I'm on the power series, you know. And love. Love and respect for my sisters and women who, cred who credit me in my music as an influence on theirs. Women like Mariah Carey, Rihanna, Keisha Coles, Kiki Palmer, and even Beyonce. I went further than I could have imagined for my performance in the movie Mudbound. I was nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress, the Critics' Choice Movie Award for Best Supporting Actress, the Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Supporting Role, and the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. You know you have arrived when Kamala Harris, the first black and South Asian female vice president-elect of the Democratic Party walks out to your song, Work That, at the 2020 Democratic National Convention. Little old me, Mary J. Blige. It pays to love yourself and wake up in the morning and say, 
Good morning, gorgeous. Sometimes you gotta look in the mirror and you say, Good morning, gorgeous. Good morning, gorgeous. Man, women are on the move in this community of hip hop. It is so important to see how far we come. I'm free. No, that's my name, free. I was the original host along with AJ Calloway on Black Entertainment TV's 106 in Park. I got my start as a DJ in Boston. Not a music DJ, but a radio DJ playing the hits. The opportunity to be seen on television and not just work from behind the mics on the radio was a no-brainer for me. I was ecstatic to host the show. It was all about the music videos in 2000, and it was our answer to MTV. Harlem, that's where we filmed, and that's where the name came from. We were at East 106 in Park. The video scene was growing, and there was another popular hip-hop show, Rap City. Rap City played videos exclusively by rap artists. It was so dope. It was created by VJ. That is video job, Alvin Jones from right here in Washington, D.C. He was known as the unseen VJ. No camera time for Alvin. But his voice became well known in the hip hop world. Video hosts were an important part of the hip hop community because we needed a home for this growing movement of music. It was so cool to be a pioneer on the frontier of video expression. I'm still free. The hip hop nation is thriving. It will continue to define itself as each generation of artists continues to tell their story. And some of these stories have not yet ended. So what have we gained from the protests of Cedar Lord Tucker and others? Well, the FCC started monitoring our lyrics. Clean versions were established with parental advisory labels on the vinyls to inform parents of inappropriate references like violence, profanity, and sexual content. We had to become more accountable. We've got this. I think women are fearless now. We say what we want and we're not taking the mess. We don't have to just be in the background dancing and shaking. We have something to say. It's time to keep going, ladies. Use your voices and platforms for good. Let them know it's not all a man's world. It belongs to us all. The 50th anniversary of hip hop was? Nah, or I should say, is a big deal. I guess it's surreal for me because it's like, I grew up with hip hop. So to realize that it is still, in my opinion, so young and so dominant is one of the best things that could ever happen in the world because it's so omnipresent in every single aspect of our lives. Not only mine, but it seems to be the rest of the world as well. It's like global domination, man. And as this community grows more, we have to become more responsible in our messaging and how we live our lives. We're parents now, which makes things look a little different. You see, I didn't testify against rap because I don't love my young brothers. I love my people. I love black men, but you cannot continue to wage war against young women. It is everyone's responsibility to do better. Do not let these big corporations lead you into hating each other. I know I'm looked upon as the villain because I'm standing up against dangerous language, but I'm standing up for you. It's not too late to do the right thing. I've gone from gang banging to television commercials, from cooking with Martha Stewart to recording a gospel album. I know we can make a difference. I've studied all of those who were successful around me, like 50 Cent, Drake, Eminem, and Jay-Z. He was a mogul that came from the hood to the ballroom, started a clothing line, NBA team ownership, record label president, and a production company owner. We can do it all. 
and stay true to hip hop because hip hop is here to stay. <laughs> Were they great? Take another vow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't you guys move. Look at this picture. This picture is our children. All of these children live in Southeast Washington going to various schools. They've never acted in their life. Listen to all that information that they have. Could you do that? Could you do that? I know. So before we leave, I just want to acknowledge the magic. First of all, the magic is visual. You see this costuming? This costuming came from a young woman, well, not so young anymore, who came from California, worked at Universal Studio, did good times and all of that, came here, dedicated her services to the Department of Parks and Rec, to teach kids how to sew. It's called sew and know. But these professional uh, uh, costumes comes from somebody who is very, very experienced. Let's give a hand for Janice Rankin. The other, where's Janice? The other magic, the other magic is the writing. I, I'm always the one who comes to it with the concept. We have a little team. I don't, it's very organic. But once I say and we agree on a theme, Shiva Haley writes this stuff. The whole point was to educate. How many of you learned things about hip hop that you didn't know? Amazing you know, about the background and all. So we always, we always want to entertain, but we always want to make you to understand that the power of this whole thing is what it does to these kids. They are never the same again. These kids have come here, their confidence is up. Some of them stop stuttering. It's amazing, it's transformational. So God works through this. The other is to educate them and you, and then of course, ultimately to entertain. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being supportive. I appreciate you. DJ, let's go again. Thank you.
smoking weed in the street without cops harassing. Imagine going to court with no trial. Lifestyle cruising blue Bahama waters. No welfare supporters. More conscious of the way we raise our daughters. Days are shorter, nights are colder. Feeling like life is over. These snakes strike like a cobra. The world's hot, my son got knocked. Evidently, it's elementary. They want us all gone eventually. Trooping out of state for a plate. Knowledge, if coke was cooked without the garbage, we'd all have the top dollars. Imagine everybody flashing, fashion, designer clothes, lacing your click up with diamond rolls. Your people's holding dough, no parole, no rubbers. Going raw, imagine. 